Hey toy fans, Aaron here. Today taking a look at the Power of the Force release of the Tusken Raider which came out towards the end of 96. And on the card there were a few different versions of them. You have what you're seeing here, red card, which does have an updated look from the rest of the Power of the Force line. And then he came out on a green card and a green card with hollow sticker, which you could peel off anyways and reveal the color photo. Changes on the red card is you now have a collection number on the top right corner. And basically anything that was silver on the card, the silver lettering for Star Wars, and the outline around his photo has been changed to a gold color. The Tusken Raider did have a variation to him. And that is, while on the red card, you can find him with a closed hand, which is what you're seeing here. And when I go through the loose figure, I'll show you the hand as it's opened up more. Backside top half is still your index bio cutout that you could, uh, you know, have off to the side and save. You had a great photo of the Tusken Raider on there, along with just some basic bio information, his height, status, classification, and such. Bottom half of the card, you got a few shots of other figures that were available in the line around this time, along with a couple vehicles below that, and then a longer checklist off to the right of other figures. And now taking a look at him out of the packaging. First up, since I already kind of mentioned it, I'll show off the hand. His left hand, as you're going to see it on this figure, is in a more open position, whereas on the card it is closed. The people just couldn't get the weapon into his hand, so Hasbro did make a running change to the figure. As far as the rest of the figure, well, um, boy... I'm going to say this is a little bit of a tough figure for me, but then again, honestly, I don't feel like to date we've really received that perfect Tusken Raider figure yet. The 6-inch line, I think they did a fantastic job with what was done there, but you get this one where everything's molded, he doesn't have any soft goods for an outer robe, and actually I really don't feel like he's got an outer robe at all. And then you get into the later lines where they did give him a soft goods outer robe, but they were just all so large and bunched up, it didn't sit well. And like I said, I feel like that is something that they did nail for the 6-inch release. Looking at the head sculpt of the figure, detailing and what they did with the sculpt looks great. I do feel like it's just a little bit too small. It doesn't, uh, it just doesn't seem to me that for its size that there would still be a human head inside all this wrapping and uh, mechanical gear on the outward part of the face. But like I said, as far as the detailing of the sculpt we received, I think things do look good. You can certainly make out the various bandages that are wrapped in there. Painting for the little silver spiky things on the top of his head looked pretty good. And painting on the front of the face looks great also. The silver is well placed. A couple black dots inside there. As far as the rest of the figure, I mean, the Power of the Force line used these outer shells a lot for um, figures that had robes. And for the most part, it works. It's not very aesthetically pleasing to see. I'm glad that they eventually transitioned to just sculpting these parts onto the figure itself. This really isn't part of the robe that the figure wears anyway, so I don't understand the need to do that here. Except it was a way to give the figure some draped clothing for the lower half of the figure where it did belong, so I guess they achieved it with that. Through the arms, sculpting is looking pretty nice. I love the tattered edges that they managed to sculpt in there. And even here and there throughout the sleeves, you got a little bit of torn cloth being sculpted in there. It's very subtle and I think it works quite well. While I already mentioned that his left hand was sculpted in that open position, his right hand is not usable at all. It is sculpted closed and even kind of filled in with some plastic. I don't know why they just wouldn't go through the added step of just leaving a little hole there opening that up. Across the chest he's got two bandoliers. You know, not much to the painting of it. It's all done in just a brown coloring which still matches up with what the character had and detailing to that sculpt is still pretty decent. You can certainly make out the individual pouches in there. And as it runs along to the back side, you got the same look going on. As far as the sculpting underneath that bandolier, you do have some bunching of the fabric being done, so a lot of lines sculpted in to replicate that. Cloth belt sculpted in there, also wrapping around the waist. Sculpting for the lower part of his robes looks very nice also. Some nice folding of the fabric, giving it some good dimension. And once again, as you get down towards the bottom, a lot of tattered edges being sculpted in there. And then getting down to the legs of the figure... Uh, basically, he's got mummy legs, just lots of bandages wrapped around his thighs. And, and that detailing to the sculpt, once again, like I said, even for the head, looks quite nice here. And really, if you just remove that whole outer shell, you can see that the upper half of his chest and his legs are all done in the same manner. And then getting down to the feet, you've got a similar sculpt going on, but really just a transition in the paint coloring being done there. As far as articulation, the head swivels a full 360, as do the arms at the shoulder joint. Full swivel at the waist, and then for the legs, even with that outer shell on, you can still bring them pretty much straight out, and almost straight back. 
As for accessories, comes with a single gaffy stick. You know, not much to speak of for detailing, but it was a simple weapon already. Sculpting to it is fairly representative of what we saw. On one end, you got that curved blunted part, and then on the other end, you got your spike portion. Kind of molded in this like off purple brown coloring, and then painted silver at the spiked end. And as long as you don't have the closed handed version of the figure, he holds it relatively well. It is still a little loose in his hand, but it does stay. And unfortunately with the lack of articulation, there's not much you can really do with him holding this weapon anyways. So overall for me on this figure, you know, I mean, when it was released, I was very happy to be able to purchase it. I didn't have the original vintage version, so I was finally able to get a new Tusken Raider. The shell for a cloak doesn't quite work for me, and while I feel soft goods would be better for the figure, like I said, the releases that have had it, those soft goods have been so big and bulky that those haven't been great either. But for its time, and that's the merits that I'm actually looking back on this as, it wasn't a horrible release. At least in my mind. So that wraps this one up. Definitely let me know what your thoughts are on this figure in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.